Hello and welcome to another ME7 podcast special guest episode. Tonight we are joined by a man who played near on 200 times for the football club, won two player of the years in that time in his two spells and picked up a champions medal. He did manage to get one in the end. He told me that the other day. We are joined today by Danny Jackman. Danny, how are you, buddy? I'm good, thanks. Yourself? Yeah, not bad, not bad. Okay, right, let's go back, all the way back to 2006, when you joined the Jules. Um, 2005, actually, 2005, you joined, start of 2005 in the summer. We've just been relegated yeah. from the championship. Mm -hmm. How did that move come about? Um, I was at, at Stockport at the time, and the new management had come in, um, and it was Chris Turner, I think he was, as the manager then. Um, and I kind of got sort of... Um, to know pretty early that I wasn't his type of player. I was a short player. He liked big players. I was like, well, that's fine. I still had a year left, but I managed to sort of like get a bit of a trial really down at Gillingham and decided to drive down down there and didn't realise actually how far it was away. I thought I'd got lost, to be honest. But yeah, managed to get all the way down there and um, had a trial, kind of like a few, few days training there. And um, Neil Cooper was the manager and, I managed to do kind of enough really and um, to impress him and he wanted to, um, to to sign me so I think things got cancelled at uh, Stockport's end and yeah I signed signed two years there. Um, yeah, yeah you did obviously the, the club had just been relegated from the championship um, mm -hmm. it, it, it it was it was it was after five years in in the championship for the Jules. How, how how was the club in terms of the feeling around the place and and, and just the general mood? Um, from what I can remember, I mean, for me, from a personal point of view, I was quite excited, you know, a club that just come down and stuff like that. You know, I obviously watched their results and stuff like that, seeing them in the championship. So then coming down, it was like, you know, it was a great opportunity for me. I thought, you know, to kind of go and be part of something to hopefully try and push back up and get up at the, at the league. Around the actual ground itself, I think it was a bit of a... It was a funny time because there was a lot of real senior players. You know, Hesse was there, Saundo was there and Smudger. And so there was a lot of really, really senior players when they were like, you know, in their mid mid 30s and obviously a slightly older, some of them. So it was a really kind of weird kind of um, atmosphere, obviously, the going down and stuff like that. And obviously the legends that you had, like I said, the, the guys that I've mentioned already there that were a huge part of what the club had been all about previous years. So... You know, to go in there, it was kind of a, it was a bit intimidating and daunting because th these, you know, they're huge characters and they're huge kind of players from within that club. So it was a bit of a transitional period for, for them. So from within the squad wise, you know, whenever a team goes down, there's always a new management generally, or if not, there's a whole host of changes of, of, of players as well. So there was, that was kind of something that, you know, had to kind of come through at the very early stages of, of when I first signed and stuff like that. So, you know, it was um, it was a difficult spell for, for for the manager at that point because, again, he had players that weren't his players and players that were. So, like most managers, they have to deal with that. And when you've got Hesse and uh, Sondo and, and, and massive, massive characters like that have been such a massive part of the club, for them, it's obviously always going to be, the manager is always going to be a, a tough, a tough um, balancing act, really. Yeah, because I mean, you, you mentioned about legend, the legends there as well, but then you also had really exciting players coming through. Lot, and I think one of them was obviously Matty Jarvis was was, was yeah. coming through at the time, and and mm -hmm. I think everyone was kind of looking at him as the as the next best thing as well. I mean, you mentioned about the transition period as well when 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 you, when you were coming in of all, all of those big players. Did you did you feel walking in from day one that? It was it was that they were big characters in that change room that were almost leading that dressing room for for, for Neil Hooper. Yeah, definitely. They were, like I said, you know, Hesse had, had a spell as manager as well. I think at that before at that point or just before that. Um, so you know, it, as a manager, uh, you know, I think it's it's going to be a, it's a funny kind of situation to be in. Um, you know, and a lot of a lot of senior senior players, you know, with you know, big personalities and stuff. Um, and like any kind of budgets, when you go down, things have to be kind of like trimmed accordingly. So, you know, it was it was no doubt a, a really thankless task, really. Um, you know, 
they they were they were good guys. They were still you know highly competitive. You know, which is something that as youngsters we kind of like looked at and thought, yeah, that's why they've played. You know, this, the level they have and and how they're still continuing to play. Um, so you know that kind of like for me personally, it was good to see that and learn off them and um, learn that kind of hard character side of things. Um, you know, and we had like people like Jarvo, you know, and uh, Liam Johnson and, and youngsters like that, that were still kind of, you know, still trying to find their way really in the sense of trying to find their way into a, like a team, into a, you know, into a league as well. So yeah, it was, um, it was a, it was a funny, not a funny like change room. It was great. It was probably one of the better changing rooms that I'd been part of, you know? So um yeah, but it was in terms of the dynamics of old players and young players and then old players not being wanted at the club and stuff like that, which I then later on found in my career that's, you know, that's how it works. But um, yeah, it was, it was um, a big learning curve for me and seeing how it, it all panned out was um, was interesting. Yeah, we obviously as Shields fans know you predominantly of, of playing a le- uh, at left back. You, you, you were a left back, but that first part of the first part of that season, you were used as a left winger that mm-hmm. time. Um, yeah, how was how was that for you playing left wing? Was it just a normal transition thing, or uh, I played it? there. I played there a, a few times at Villa and stuff like that, and Stockport and stuff. I think Stockport signed me as a left back wing back type thing. But like you know, that I I played a lot at, at left wing as well. Um, but yeah, it was it was a funny one because I think. I signed and they put me in, in left wing. I think that Tom Williams, I think it was, that was also came in at the same sort of time. So I kind of got pushed forward a little bit and it was a little bit trying to find my feet with it because I've been so used to playing left back. So it was it was a bit foreign to a certain degree. Um, and I don't think Tom ended up staying around for very long at, uh, that year anyway. So um, it was a bit of a kind of, you know, stop start really in terms of where I was being asked to play really. But um, yeah, it was probably... Not my strongest position, if I'm being honest, of being as a left winger because I'm sharp off the off off the kind of like the, the ten yards, but anything like Jarvo's pace I haven't got. So it was always funny. Me and him actually used to always joke. Why well, used to joke generally? It was like when I used to play left back and he used to play left wing, and I used to give him the ball, and I was like, I'll, I'll try and overlap you, but I might not be able to catch you. So it was kind of like it was a bit of a running joke, but it was uh, yeah, it was. We'll ask you know, him that because we've got him on at the po- we've got him on the podcast at the end of the month. Yeah, so ask him. Yeah, we'll, sure. ask, we'll ask him about that, shall we? Um, I, mean, I mean, we used to we used to be roomies anyway, so it was kind of like we always used to have a lot a little bit of a laugh and a little bit of a giggle about it. And but we nice. were we were we, we got on really well at, at that point as well. So it was um yeah, it was he was a, he's a great kid and someone that you know I have kept in contact with you know every now and again and gone to watch him play and stuff like that. So um like seeing how his careers developed and stuff like that and how it panned out was, you know, it couldn't have happened to a nicer guy. You know, you come across all kinds of characters, but he's one of the guys that you kind of like, you can't, you know, he's just been brilliant and it couldn't have happened to a nicer guy. Brilliant. Brilliant. Okay. So you mentioned about the change room. I mean, Danny, they obviously must have liked you because that first season you were at the Jills, you were, you were voted players player. You won, you won the players player award in that, in that first year. Um, mm. Yeah, you, you that that is the best award a footballer can can possibly win, isn't it? Getting a, an award off your teammates. Yeah, it was it, like those those types of um, accolades are brilliant. You know, off your fellow professionals, and um, I was lucky enough throughout my career to get a few of those. So um, yeah, I kind of why they give you that, I don't know. You know, what whatever I did that season must have kind of it was really nice. But I think. You know, I always try to pride myself on always working hard, doing the best I could and trying to fight for for everything I kind of got. And, you know, it sounds a bit cliche, being the short guy that I am, I've had to kind of go through a lot of diversity and a lot of rejection. So, you know, that always kind of put me in good stead to just keep fighting and keep kind of going um, to probably the similar sort of like mentality that Hesse had really, where, you know, I had uh, like, I had a lot of knockbacks of, of managers that were, you know, wouldn't touch you with a barge bowl because of your height, but you kind of just, you either sink or swim. And I was one of those that would always roll my sleeves up and try and prove them wrong and work hard and stuff like that. And I think probably that's what kind of kind of got me those awards possibly with it, with that little bit of quality that I had as well. So um, yeah, it was, it was nice. It was really nice. Yeah. 
Um, correct me if I'm wrong now, Danny. Did you you did play the, the with Neil Harris, didn't you? Uh, when he yeah, was at, yeah, 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 I, yeah. I thought I thought he was at Jules that uh, yeah. that that year. Uh, yeah, yeah. Let's let's talk about a couple because there's obviously you, you, you've come onto a Jules podcast tonight. Let's talk about the current Jules manager. Um, mm -hmm. Could you see could you see him being being becoming a manager? Yeah, definitely. He was kind of um, very driven, very focused in 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 his in his playing kind of career, and you know he was very infectious of how he played. And what I loved about him was the fact that you know he was. He was a nice guy off the pitch, but on the pitch he was horrible and he would want to do anything he could to win. And yep. I think that he'll probably get that across to his teams um, about, you know, working hard, but also trying to get results at any costs and stuff like that. And yeah, I, I could see him going to management um, and it's just, it's great that he's, he's back there and well, I was watching really closely and, you know, it's so sad to see them go down, the the Jills go down. But you know what? He's done a fantastic job to give them any chance of staying up. Yeah. You know, where he where they were when he came in to where they ended up, you know, leaving it to the last day to, you know, give himself a chance is just remarkable, really. And something that, you know, he should feel very proud with. I know he'll be really bitterly disappointed to kind of like, you know, have that. Um, but I think most fans will realise, you know, how much hard work he put in and how close he came to kind of keeping the club up. So, you know, I think given uh, the players that he might want or his, his squad, you know, I think the club's in, in, in good hands with, with him. And knowing the history about what the fans expect and want, then again, it's another another um, plus as, as a manager, really. Oh, yeah, I completely agree. OK, let's go back. Let's go back then. Um, the following year, you were awarded, you got another accolade. You're all the goal of the season um, for the strike that you scored against Brentford. Um, I, 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 I remember that strike. It was a, it was kind of a dipping a dipping strike into the corner at the town end. It was a it was a lovely lovely strike. Um, and you had that you had that in your locker all the time. Um, talk us through that strike. I think I just got a bit of a like. I think Ronnie was in my. He'd been in my ear at half time, I think, and <laughs> and I can't remember what he said to me and like something about getting forward a bit more or whatever and having a go. And, you know, it just popped out. I think I was probably just a bit angry at him, a bit pissed off about him. So I kind of like I was a bit forward and I just thought, well, I'm just going to do this, and it, it came off. Which you know, I, you know, I did lack confidence in times with situations like that. So you know, it was um, it was a good strike and something that I was you know really pleased that went in. And I think we were kind of. If I remember rightly, we weren't we were under a little bit of pressure in terms of where we were in the league. So it was always nice to get a little bit of um uh, you know a win. I think that got us a win. I think so. Um, yeah, it was good. It was great to get a goal, and you know for it to be um, voted player um, goal of the year was, was was great. Yeah. Okay. So you then you then obviously left in in two thousand and seven. Um, mm -hmm. Tell us about tell us about how that move come about, and 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 why did you why did you start to leave? Um, again, going back to kind of, I'd had a bit of a tough time that season. Uh, um, obviously, when when um, Ronnie took over, uh, again, I had to go through the whole kind of process of trying to kind of prove him wrong and feel like, you know, I um, had to kind of fight for my position, which again, you know, every player wants to do and wants to, but I felt that I had to kind of, do even more um, again because of Ronnie's um, mentality of what he wanted as a team and, and, and players etc. I probably didn't fit into that type, and I actually remember having quite a lot of spells on the on on the um, on the sidelines. And one thing that always would stick with me um, was I think the performances or, or results weren't great. And I remember we were at Swansea away. And I remember like being on the bench and stuff like that. And I hadn't had much game time as well. And I remember the fans singing my name and stuff like that. And it was like that. And it built up over a few weeks. And then I managed to get in the team, whether that was through pressure or whatever. But it, it and, and I kind of got in the team then and it, I stayed in. So I kind of really got those guys to thank for that because I don't know whether it was a little bit of pressure from them side or what. But um, yeah, and then I kind of like, you know, showed showed him what I could do and again, having to prove myself again and, and, and do that. So it was kind of, you know, it was a tough time. 
So that's why I decided that I would leave the club because I think Ronnie was going to still be in charge. Um, he offered me, a, 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 I think the club offered me to stay, but Northampton, I knew Stuart Gray from my Villa days. Um, and he was was there and he got, sort of I had a chat with him and he was a little bit closer to home. Um, and um, yeah, so it was just a bit of a fresh challenge and a new management style, um, someone that I knew very well, someone that I trusted, someone that um, trusted me and stuff like that. So it was just, it all pointed towards, you know, having a fresh start and, you know, and, and yes, I was really disappointed to leave, but I felt that I had to do that at that time. Yeah. OK, so you only stayed away from the club a couple of years. You, you, you decided to come <laughs> back in. You decided yeah. to come back in 2009. How did, mm-hmm. that, how did that move come about? Um, I kind of had two, two uh, years at Northampton and, you know, again, I loved it, loved my time there. And um, we kind of unfortunately got relegated to League Two then. Um, and Gillingham, I think we... Had we, had we played them? I can't remember. I remember playing against uh, Stimo's team. And, um, yeah, I remember um, thinking, oh, I want to try and play as high as I can for as long as I can. Yeah. Um, I still felt I had a little bit of unfinished business at the club, really, with how I left. Um, and so, yeah, I just wanted to play as high as I could for as long as I could. And Jills were in, went into League One. They won the playoffs. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, so I thought, yeah, I, I want to have another go. And, uh, Stimmer like expressed a real interest, and and chairman did as well. So it was um, it was nice to to come back. Yeah, because I remember that cup game. Um, I'm pretty sure you got announced. Like, I'm pretty sure you got announced that evening. I think by the by the stadium announcer that we'd we'd, we'd signed you. Um, yeah. And I remember you walking out the tunnel, and you got such. A, I even remember to the day such an amazing reception from the yeah, nice. crowd that. Like when you come out, it was unbelievable. How was that for you? It was like it was amazing. It was such a, uh, an amazing experience. I remember it was it was at Blackburn, I think it was. Yeah. Um, and um, yeah, it was just like walking back out there. It was like it was nice. It was so nice. It was just like you come back home to a certain degree, and uh, it was um, uh, yeah, it was like I'd never been away, like you know, and um, yeah. Although it, certain things felt different, it was just like, you know, felt comfortable and familiar and stuff like that. But it was actually um, a bit of an awkward story with that one because I was um, at Northampton doing pre-season and I had a bit of a knee issue, um, which couldn't really work out what it was. Um, and I hadn't trained for most of the pre-season. And then I ended up kind of um, uh, signing for Gillingham and I, I ended up getting it sorted at Gillingham with the knee, the knee issue eventually anyway uh, so I said to sort of um, some other I hadn't um, I hadn't trained and I did feel that Northampton might see it as me not wanting to play for him by kind of like feigning an injury so I wouldn't didn't think it would be a good idea for me to kind of be involved or whatever you know he's like yeah yeah that's fine that's fine but just sit on the bench and you can have warm up and down a few times and then uh, take you sort of like your applause and, you know, it'd be great for everyone. I was like, okay, new manager, you've got to do what he says, really, haven't you? You don't want to start off on the wrong foot. So I was like, okay, fine. And then, like, after about an hour, he turns around and says, Jacko, get ready, you're going on. I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> so I was like, oh, okay, fine. And, you know, you got to do what you got to do because he's your manager. So I know it didn't go down too well at Northampton, but I can hand on my heart and say that I didn't, not want to play for the club and for strain injury. I did have an issue, which ended up did getting sorted by by the Jill's uh, physio team. So um, yeah, but fans, you know what fans are like. They only see certain One things, and it. you know. Yeah. So yeah, which is sad because I I'd left Northampton, um, being back to back player of the year. Um, so I was only the second player in the club's history to do that. Um, so yeah, it was kind of a sad thing as you go from love to hate in in a, in a fan's eyes quite quickly. So, yeah. you know that that was disappointing for me. But again, it was kind of my hand was forced to, when when someone said you're going you're going on. So, Mark Simpson's fault. <laughs> um, well, yeah. I, yeah, I mean um, the rest of the season didn't plan out the way we wanted it to. Um, we ended up we ended up going back down to League Two um, mm. for a player that obviously yourself you you love the club so yeah. much and and, and that, yeah. that had been the second time you returned how how hard was that Danny 
it was really hard because I I kind of had I, I only just got back in tra training really and working on my fitness and stuff like that and then I ended up getting like dislocated my shoulder at um, Southampton and I was like uh, then it was kind of surgery and then it was like like two three three and a half nearly four months by the time I was able to come back then and by that point the club was the team was in you know a bit of bother and stuff like that and it was so hard it was I you kind of I took it so personally and so felt so guilty that you know I the manager had made this effort to sign me the yeah. chairman had sort of like you know put his hand in his pocket a little bit to get me back and then you know months like weeks later I'm injured out for a few months and I felt really bad and guilty about that and something that you know I, I then always trying to pay catch up and yeah, it was just it's so hard as any player will tell you once you've been injured for so long trying to get into a get up to speed of things as well as the team that's in struggling bad form it's just hard and uh yeah it was it was gutting I remember being sat on the bench at um Wickham away in the last day of the season and yeah you know and and that was that was really hard especially that you know I didn't get on and sort of could see things unfolding and stuff like that and it was just yeah it, that was probably one of the my lower points at the club um just because again it was a lot of it was out of my hands. And I couldn't do anything to help or anything like that, really. Um, and obviously, the manager at that point reverted back to his kind of his players that he felt he could trust in terms of like the um, the lads that come with him from Stevenage and stuff like that. Yeah. So, you know, it was it was a bit of a fractious kind of a time at that sort of like later on in the season, really. And it was kind of yeah, it wasn't nice, and it was got into sort of like that relegation on the last day was was really really tough and I yeah I felt it felt it as much as probably the fans did at that point yeah I mean yeah the following year um Stimbo had obviously gone but mm -hmm. your ex-teammate Andy Essen Tyler took the job um yeah. he, he obviously had been manager at the club before yeah mm -hmm. how was how was that for you uh, uh, getting that opportunity to play under play under Andy great it was amazing when I when I when he first so, um, took over I was like so excited and stuff like that and <laughs> again um, whether it was sort of like pressures from above or whatever it got off to a bit of a sticky start and I think he he necessarily didn't want me as, at, at the club he wanted to try and bring his own players in um, so again I remember like being in pre-season into September you know thinking croaky you know I'm having to go through the whole Ronnie Jepson thing again, you know, um, just to try and prove himself. Did he ever, um, ever have that honest chat with you at all? Like, and, he, and yeah, say... yeah, yeah, he did, he did, he did. He said, he, you know, he said that he wouldn't, he couldn't see me getting much game time, um, that, you know, if I could find a club, then he'd be happy for me to go. And I was kind of a bit gutted at that, really, really yeah. gutted at that. Um, because, you know, no one likes to, to leave a club that you kind of like you're so passionate about really and especially you know feeling that you have got a lot to offer mm. um and trying to sort of put the pre previous season right again um so you know i'm not one of these that would kind of like you know i, I want to try and put it right um so yeah so um it being a stop start sort of return it was kind of like i you know i've only just come back i don't really want to disappear again so yeah it was we had that mm. chat and I, I can't even remember what I said. I was kind of like, well, yeah, well, we'll see. And I thought, well, I'm not going. I'm just going to keep, keep fighting for it and and stuff like that. And he probably wanted me out, so he could probably be used wages elsewhere. I don't know. Um, again, I know this now, being older and how things work and stuff yeah. like that. So, But at the time, when you're a player, it's you're taking it really personally. So I was like, I just thought, well, I'm going to show you. And I ended up, you know, playing and doing really well that season. Um and yeah, the rest was history in that in that sense. Um, and then, yeah, so one in rounds, and we ended up becoming like you know really good, um, you know, good relationship again. So, you know, it's just that's something I would always say to youngsters is you know, there is always a way. You know, you just got to try and be resilient and just keep sticking it out. Really. Yeah, it was a bit of a mad year that year though, wasn't it? Was that we had a. We had a couple of five fours in there. We had seven fours. We had four threes. We had three twos. It was mental that mm. we were so good going forward, but defensively we just yeah. on the wall over the place, weren't we? Yeah. We said, what, yeah. what, what, as a player, what did what, what do you even put that down to? Um, I don't know. 
I really don't know. I mean, we had some experience as well in, in, in like, um, Matt Lawrence. So we had some experience there. So I don't, I don't really know. Um, I mean, I, I think I remember I, I played quite a lot at left back that year. Yeah. And then some in, in, in midfield as well, I think. But yeah, I, I don't know. I really can't put, remember what you, you kind of put it down to. Just, yeah. I mean, I remember us having countless sort of like uh, video analysis sort of sessions on Sundays after kind of like, <laughs> I, I think I wasn't even involved in the one game. It was Atkinson, I think it was. Yeah. It was Atkinson. It was like, you know, four, three, or I don't know what it was. Like, there's tons of goals going in. And you're like, what the hell is going on? You know, but that's what we did as a club, I suppose. It was always entertaining and it was always, yeah. you know, like, you know, edge of the seat stuff, really. So, yeah, because that Hereford game, that Hereford mm -hmm. game at Priestfield, the, yeah. the, the 5 war one that gets played every single year where, yeah. where we come from behind was crazy yeah. night, crazy, crazy night. Yeah, that was, that was a brilliant night. And, you know, always uh, evening games are always you know, extra special. And um, yeah, that one was, was very, very entertaining. Probably not for a Hesse as a manager, <laughs> but as a player, you know, I never really, I never really felt like under threat of that we were going to lose that, that game. But, you know, it, it's, it probably doesn't look like that from the side, but, you know, it's just, oh, well, we'll just, we'll just go again. We're we'll going to score now. So, uh, and that's what happened. So, yeah, because you, you, you managed to win another accolade that season as well. Was that you, you went from, in the summer, not being wanted by the manager to, to win in player of the season. In, in, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, um, again, it was just uh, another a good year. And some, like I said, I think adversity sort of drives me on, really. And, um, I, yeah, I've always sort of, like I said, tried to prove people wrong because, you know, that's what I feel that, you know, you have to do. And I won't ever shirk responsibility and I'll always have a go. And I think that's what kind of wins me. Uh, you know the fans recognition or whatever so I think that's you know that never die um, never say die attitude really so um, yeah you know, I was I was again lucky to get a, a, an award as, as well so obviously we had we had a couple of years in 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 League 2 um, mm. under Hester Tyler and, and we didn't manage yeah. to quite break into the playoffs um, mm. and, and, and obviously um, uh, the front two of Cody McDonald and and Akin Fenwar were were menacing to say the least, weren't they? Yeah, I mean it's gutting because I think this the first season uh, under Hesse we missed out by a point or two. Yeah, and I think and then I think the season after that I missed we missed out on goal difference or something stupid like that. So it was or, or a point I don't know, but it was like ridiculously close. Um, so yeah, it was um, it was that was gutting to to sort of like miss out on, in, in that way, really. You think about games throughout the season that, you know, maybe could have got a point here or just not, you know. Uh, but I think everyone does that as, as players and managers. But, um, yeah, those two guys were, were pretty exceptional. They had that connection where they knew where each other was going to be and, and, you know, they fed off each other really, really well and they're really intelligent players and stuff like that. So, you know, um, the amount of goals they scored, you know, uh, they, they were a handful for for most teams really and you know they got the service as well so um yeah they were a, they were a good good pair yeah um and then martin allen walked through the door um uh, you, you saw us says it all danny um day one walking into beach and cross martin allen's there waiting for you um yeah tell us tell us about it well i'd um the end of that second season with hesse i that was my contract up and i ended up um the club uh, had obviously uh, Hesse had departed, so it was uh, it was left to the chairman to sort of negotiate some of the deals, I suppose. And he was I just got nominated Player of the Year again and won a few more accolades and stuff like that. So I was um, I was like I wanted to stay again, unfinished business of getting the club back up and desperate to stay. wasn't in any rush to move. And um, chairman said I want to sign you on a one year deal, and I was like, yeah, that's fine, that's fine. I was going to be turning thirty at that point. I was like, yeah, that's fine. Um, I said, but I've heard rumours that Martin Allen might be taken over. And he said to me, well, he is one of the names, but he's not the, you know, he's, he's one of a whole host of names at the minute. I was like, that's fine, but I don't think I'll be his type of player. I just knew. Yeah. So I was like, Look. he said, well, yeah, but there's still about five or six players, um, managers that we're still looking at. And I was like, right, well, I've just got to go with it and trust him and stuff like that. <laughs> and like yeah. about three or four day, days later, Martin Allen gets announced. So I was like, well, okay. 
that's fine. What well, I'll, you know, uh, I'll go with how he is with me rather than what I've heard, etc. And then uh, I remember, I'll never forget, I walked in and um, again, I'd had this bit of a knee issue, which I'd had an injection in. So the lads were out running and he sat on a, like a, um, a Bielsa type drinks thing, sat on it like this. And he's watching these lads run and I walk up to him and he kind of like, he turns and looks back and carries on and goes, uh, you're, that, um, you're that player of the year, aren't you? And I was like, yeah. And he went, oh, okay. <laughs> and I was like, oh, it's nice to meet you. <laughs> I was like, this isn't going to go well. And, uh, and then obviously, you know, you're trying your hardest and you'd stuff like that. And, you know, look, managers have decisions to make and stuff like that. And I kind of, I was in the team at the start of the season, again, playing left wing, which probably wasn't my best position. Yeah. Something that I'd be playing in all midfield for the last couple of years and doing really well. Uh, so I stuck out on the left wing again as a 30 year old, you know, <laughs> it's, it's hard, you know, it's hard. Um, so, you know, I, I remember getting sent off against the team and I'd been doing all right. We'd been winning a few games and, I, and got sent off and it was like, three game ban and like we just come out of a, a Saturday Tuesday Saturday Tuesday run into when I got sent off we then had a a, <laughs> a Saturday 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 and they were the th- longest three weeks of my life I ran yeah, every day after in that yeah. point and I was like and then after that I didn't get back in and it was kind of like that was like the point that he kind of, I thought, well, I've given him a chance really to kind of like leave me out. And he did. And listen, I, I was fully committed to the team and happy to be part of it, you know, and you have to kind of give him props because he did what he did and he got the, the, the lads, the team promoted. But again, yeah. from a personal point of view, you just got it because you're not part of that, knowing that you can be something, a part of something good and something special and you can, uh, you know, give your bit of quality to the team. But you know, you've got to give him credit and he got the job done and it was great. But it was just, like I said, it was something that for the three or four years that I've been there that I've been kind of striving. I'm desperate to be part of that. Yeah. Um, and to get that, it was a bit of sweet sort of like situation, yeah. really. Um, I ended up leaving in, in Jan- late January to go to a team back closer to home, Kitty. Um, for the fact of, you know, wanting to play football and not getting that opportunity. But also knowing that the probably team would win the league, and you know, it was looking back, should I have stayed? Yes, but I was also looking at the fact that I was out of contract that season. I know for a fact that I probably wouldn't got a, an extension. Um, and then where do you go from there? So I, you know, I hadn't played for much football, so I wanted to go and try and kind of play and and, and you know look after my own future, if that makes sense. So um, you know, it was got in and. You know, I was delighted for the lads and the fans, especially, and the chairman, because, you know, he sort of showed a lot of faith in me and, you know, done a lot to sort of get me to the club on a few occasions. So I was over the moon for the, for those guys and the people that are part of the club and the backroom um, people that work in the shops and the admin and all these guys that, you know, that the young son heroes of the club and what, you know, make the club what it is. So I was delighted for all those guys, but equally I was a little bit gutted for myself. Um, but, you know, the club is back where I believed it should be at least, at least. So, you know, I, it, it was, yeah, it was... 22. Um, yeah, um, but you have got a Champions medal. You have got one. I, I have, but I have, I, it's up in my life with all my shirts. So I've not been able to get it down for you. Um, <laughs> You'll have to send us, send, it a, a, send, it, send us a picture later and we'll post it on the I'll social. send you a picture later, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm sending you a picture, yeah. So I've just been flat out, I've not been able to get to it, but yeah. There we go. Um, there we I've go. managed, yeah. to, I managed yeah. to kind of like send a few messages to the chairman and to sort of like manage to get one because I, th- I think I had played enough games to be able to qualify yeah. for one, but I didn't get one and I was like, do you know what? sod this I'm getting one <laughs> uh, so yeah so I got one so you know and it was it was just amazing and you know I did miss being part of the celebrations at the end and being part of that is a, a massive regret that I didn't have that uh, but you know like I said it's it is what it is and you know I'm delighted that they got up anyway but I will send you that I will send you that uh, picture of it and anyway so brilliant brilliant and we'll post it on our socials Danny you've been an absolute outstanding guest this evening Thank you so much for speaking about your time at the football club. Um, okay. Yeah, we are. Um, yeah, that's it. That, that is it. Over. Um, thank you for listening as always. Um, you've been listening to the ME7 podcast with our special guest, Danny Jam. <laughs>